Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, I've been working a few months now on the uh, Acon Electron uh, online module. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. It was uh, a question that popped up on Stardot just when I was uh, working on my uh, Acorn Atom online hardware. A few years ago, I uh, started some experiments uh, with an ESP8266 and my Acorn Atom. Uh, it did not went very well, but after a while, I got it working. That was last year. And when I almost got it completely working, this big question was posted on Stardot. And I finished uh, almost completely the project on the Atom. And then I started the project on the Electron in May of this year. This is uh, the hardware uh, that I built for the Atom. Uh, the display <coughs> was another project. I just added uh, for fun. Um, the ESP module is not uh, on this board. It uh, should go in the socket in the right top. In the left bottom, you see a CPLD for some decoding and level shifting. And in the right bottom is a serial interface. The ESP module itself works uh, on a serial basic. Uh, users uh, can uh, send uh, AT commands to it. And to make it a bit universal, I wrote a driver for it. And that can be loaded into the memory of the Atom. And I wrote a few uh, commands like uh, LAP, join, time, W, get. And all those commands check if the driver is loaded into the memory. If not, they load it themselves. And then use the driver. So all those commands use a single driver. That means if I need to fix a bug in the driver, I don't have to fix all those programs. And if there will be another version of the ESP that has other commands or a firmware update, I only have to update the driver. Just uh, the idea like a modern operating system has for, for many years now, like Linux, uh, Windows, Mac OS, and uh, I think the uh, RISCOS has the same structure as well. Then I went on with the Electron version and I had to make some considerations about the design. The Electron has very limited memory, only 32K in total, which uh, of which a great part, large part is spent for the screen as well. And then the Electron memory is also slow as we know. I need room to store incoming data before processing it because the data is transmitted at uh, 115 kilobaud and that's quite fast. So there's not much time to process incoming data and put it directly into the destination of the electrons memory. So I had to choose to, a way to add extra RAM and I could do a sideway RAM in banks of 16K or paged RAM. Uh, Cypher RAM is uh, commonly used in, uh, in many uh, applications. Uh, from uh, 8000 up, you have 16K of RAM. Paged RAM is not that common and it's split in uh, banks of 265 bytes and it lives at page FD. But you can extend it to 46K and even more as we will see later. Then the power supply. According to the yeah, advanced user guide, uh, and the plus one and its expansions may draw up to uh, 500 million pair from the uh, plus five uh, power supply. Um, by default, this uh, Wi-Fi board is powered internally, but if you have too much expansions on your plus one or on the electron, then you can power it from an optional USB connector 
so it can get uh, it can be uh, externally powered. The board needs both 5 volt and 3.3 volt for the CPLD and the ESP8266 module. And because of that module, the board may draw up to 200 milliampers according to the specifications. I did not really check if I ever draw that much current. The CPLD on the board uh, has uh, three functions. It performs uh, level shifting between the UART, that is 5 volt, and the ESP, that is 3.3 volts. It controls the RX and TX LEDs. Uh, each port of the UART uh, has uh, an LED for uh, visual, visual feedback, so you can see if data is being transferred or received. But on that high speed, uh, a LED may blink very, very short, so you can't see it. So uh, the CPLD controls the LED by adding a small delay, so even the smallest pulse on one of the data lines, serial lines, uh, will give a short blink of one of the LEDs. And then, of course, the uh, CPLD will do some address decoding for the EEPROM on board, the UART and the page RAM register. For the RAM, I have chosen uh, for a uh, paged RAM. So I have 265 byte banks accessible at page FD. And you can switch each of these pages to each of these pages by the paged uh, RAM register at FCFF. That's just according to the uh, standards that uh, are specified in the advanced user guide. However, my RAM chip is 180 KB, and it's a pity not to use the complete capacity of this uh, memory. So one of the outputs from the UART I used to switch between both 64K banks. So I have 180K page RAM access in total. I did realize when I was working on the design that there might be other expansions that already have paged RAM. So this RAM on this board can be disabled with a jumper. Then I have the EEPROM. And though this one is available as two banks of 16K as side ray ROM. And here I did the same trick as on the RAM. I used an extra output pin of the UART to make two extra sets of banks available. So also on this uh, EE prom, I can use uh, 64K instead of 32. And the advantage of the EE prom is it can be programmed without a programmer, and I will uh, use that in, pra uh, in practice as well. The UART that I use has two independent channels operating up to 15, 150 uh, baud. It has a 16 byte buffer, which uh, has also proven to be uh, very useful. It has uh, two ports, uh, like I said, port B is used for the uh, Wi-Fi device, and port A is available for general usage. So your electron gets an, an extra serial port as well. And the UART also controls some uh, memory banks in the ROM and the RAM, and also does some control on the Wi-Fi device. For example, it can uh, enable or disable it, or give it a hard reset. And the ESP8266, the, one of the main components uh, on this board, this one uh, takes care for the uh, conversion of the uh, serial commands that uh, arrive from the uh, electron and sets those commands, uh, converts those commands to TCP IP commands and 
of the communication with the network. It supports UDP, TCP and SSL connections. Uh, and I must say I have tried to use SSL connections but I never got a uh, good uh, result on that. And it might be because uh, most web servers uh, have SNI, which is an, uh, an extension on the uh, original SSL uh, connections, HTTPS uh, protocol. You can uh, use some easy uh, AT commands, just like the Haze modems in the, in the past. You can just send for an AT command uh, to get the version. And it's just an ASCII string that you send to the device and you get an ASCII result back. For controlling the uh, UR of uh, the uh, ESP8266, you can enable it or disable it and give it a hard reset. I use uh, uh, signal lines from the UR that are not used for what they are intend intended for, like uh, the DTR and the RTS uh, signals. The module has no handshaking, so uh, it means, uh, at least in, in hardware. So I have these line signal pins available for other functions. And that's uh, done uh, for, uh, for these functions. And then I uh, started to uh, design my uh, first board and I got an enormous error on this board, namely the footprint of the CPLD uh, was wrong. I changed the CPLD from a uh, PLCC44 package to a uh, surface mounted package, but I did not realize that the pinout was different. So that was rendering the board completely uh, useless. However, with some help of TTL logic, it was usable enough to test some basic functionalities. So I built a very simple address decoder with a six, four, uh, 74, 47 LS139. So I could test uh, if the uh, UART was addressable and the RAM and also the page RAM reg register. That's the small I see in the middle bottom. After the failure, I designed or I corrected the new board. And this is how it looks like now. You can see in the left upper corner, there's the ROM. In the middle is the RAM. And the right upper corner is the uh, U8. In the left lower corner is the CPLD. In the middle is the paged RAM register. And in the right bottom is the ESP module. And then the software. I managed uh, to uh, keep the software in the 16K EEPROM. As a matter of fact, I still have some space available. And you have two integrated drivers. One is a serial driver that does the communication with the uh, UART. And I have the ESP8266 driver. Both drivers are completely compatible with the Atom version. Those drivers uh, are the basis for the commands that I uh, have also integrated in this ROM. And as we uh, noticed, the EEPROM can be programmed without a programmer, so I can update the ROM uh, over the internet without a programmer. These are the uh, commands that are available. Date and time will uh, show you the date and time, which are fetched from a web server. IFCFG gives the uh, current IP and MAC address of the ESP module. The star join command is used to connect to a network. 
star leave command is to disconnect from a network. Then we have LAP, that is the list of access points that show you, uh, shows you a list of all the access points in your neighborhood. And it gives uh, about uh, seven fields of data. And with uh, LEP OPT, lab opt, you can select which of those fields will be shown in the output of the uh, LAP command. Star mode is a command to set the uh, access mode of the uh, ESP module. It can be a station or it can be an access point or both. Star PRD is uh, the page to RAM dump utility for a short inspection or quick inspection of the contents of the page RAM. Then the star update will check if there is an update available for the ROM. If the one is found, you get a choice. Will you, do you want to install it, yes or no? And if you press yes, it will be downloaded. There is a CRC check to uh, uh, have some uh, <coughs> setting if the uh, download went well. And then it will erase and reprogram the ROM. Star version will give the current ROM version and the firmware information of the ESP module. And WGET is a versatile tool to download information from the internet. For example, uh, text files, you can download a text file and display it on your screen. And you can uh, download a program and store it in memory. Uh, yesterday, I expanded that to uh, download the ROM directly into the sideway RAM area. And so are many, some other options as well. And then there's the star Wi-Fi command that controls the Wi-Fi controller. Um, for example, you can enable or disable Wi-Fi, but also perform a hardware reset of the module or software reset this command. The driver has a, a set of functions, but is not directly accessible uh, from your own program. So if you write program, for example, you want to start a web browser, uh, text only, um, you cannot do a call just into the sideway ROM for accessing uh, a web page. So I introduced a new OS Word call, and that can be used to access the driver. For this uh, OS Word call, you create a, a parameter block in the memory of the electron. And then with a pointer, you can point to this block and so pass information to the driver. Then there was another uh, challenge on the electron. Um, it is famous because of its uh, slow memory, but it is even more slower in high resolution modes. And I wanted to try to get this uh, interface also working in mode uh, three, for example, then you have an 80 column display, which might be useful when uh, printing or displaying text from the internet. Um, One of the problems is that uh, uh, also uh, interrupts are occurring in uh, each mode and writing to the main memory slows down the CPU. It is possible with such high data rates uh, to uh, retrieve and store data on a one megahertz uh, 6502 processor, but on the electron data will be lost. On the Startup Forum, Dave Hoglet said there, were, there are three methods to speed up the electron in the high resolution modes. One is avoid accessing the main memory or do the data transfer in a non-maskable interrupt handler or cheat by selecting mode six during the transfer. I have to uh, I have uh, considered each uh, of those uh, options. 
and it was the most easy way to avoid accessing the main memory, although it sounds complicated. Uh, an NME, NMI uh, handler uh, could also be possible, but I think that might take some additional care not to conflict with uh, other NMI uh, users like uh, Disk System or Econet. By selecting mode 6 during a transfer, that's also uh, easy to implement, but you will get a screen flickering uh, at each time you uh, use uh, the Wi-Fi uh, functions. So I think that's the least elegant way to, uh, to prevent uh, my problems. So I have chosen uh, to, access, to avoid access to the main memory and I uh, disable interrupt for that because on each interrupt you get uh, stack access and also uh, reading uh, system vectors at page 200. Also, I uh, cannot use the stack or zero page or end zero page. That means I can not use the jump to subroutine uh, instruction of the 6502. And that's uh, not the real problem. Uh, data is stored in the page RAM, but, which is also outside of the main memory. And for uh, additional uh, bytes that uh, might even get lost for some reason, I uh, enabled the 16 byte buffer of the UR. So if the electron for whatever reason is not fast enough to process uh, one byte after a the uh, previous byte is uh, received, and it will be stored in the buffer. Well, now I have basic uh, functionality uh, working. I have uh, some future plans, network printing, so I can connect to, uh, I think, a small daemon on my network and send data from the electron to that uh, to the daemon and then send it to uh, a printer. I'm not intending to uh, implement the complete, complete LPD daemon like uh, Linux and Unix systems have, since that it's, uh, that's way too complicated. And I don't think I, the Electron has uh, enough memory for that. Then uh, I have uh, Wi-Fi CFS to directly read UEF files from a web server based on uh, UPCFS from uh, Martin Bar. Or related to that, uh, Wi-Fi DFS to directly read SSD file from a web server. And well, who knows what you will come up with. I have uh, set up a small demonstration movie that I want to show. So I think now you should see it. Yeah, perfect. So I did a recording uh, because I know I would uh, I would screw up my uh, my code for the demo. And by last evening I did use so. so here we have uh, the uh, LAP with the option to show only uh, the uh, encryption and the name of the uh, SSID and field strength. I join my, uh, my local network and to, not to show you my password, I uh, don't give it uh, on the command line, but we get no response from device. So this is an error and I have to specify the password, password as a workaround on the command line. Uh, 
and now it's connected to the Wi-Fi network. And I can do a start time or start date command to get the time and date. You can see I prepared uh, this video some days ago. Then we switch to mode three, the high resolution mode. I use the wget command to download a text file and display it on the screen. And as you can see, it works quite well, even in a high resolution uh, graphic mode. Oh, we'll get show back to, uh, to the version, it's 0 0.14, which has a bug in it because of the join command. So we can now do an update. Is the update available? Yes, so download it. Do the CRC check, flash the ROM and reprogram it. And now it's one version higher. So I disconnect from the Wi-Fi network and now I'll rejoin it. Again, by omitting the password on the command line, it will ask for it again. And now it is connected, so the bug has been fixed. So oh, I mentioned the Wi-Fi CFS and actually it's uh, already working. As you can see here, I downloaded the UEF file from the internet and just can start, run and play a game. So my half an hour uh, is over. I uh, thank you for your attention and uh, well, if you have questions, uh, just ask them on the Stardot forum. Perfect. And, and thanks very much for taking the time to do the presentation, Roland. It was really interesting to see it work. It's a, it's a nice project. Thank you.